Hello, my name is Cody Deegan, and I am an artist. Today we're going to be talking about anatomy. So let's jump right into this. I've got a skeleton frame here, and I'm going to start putting muscles on it. Let's go ahead and start with the chest muscles. So I like to find this point right at the bottom of the sternum right here, and I come up a little bit and give myself a construction line that follows the form of the rib cage. By following the form, I mean it curves a little bit. The rib cage isn't flat. And I come over just enough where it starts to turn in the other direction, it starts to come around the side. So right about here. I'll do the same on the other side. Now I don't necessarily need all these construction lines. The only one I need is from here to here because I'm trying to figure out where the placement of the chest muscle is. But for demonstration purposes, so you know what I'm talking about, I put these lines in. So the chest muscle, it's gonna sit right here on the rib cage. It's going to come over to the sternum, come all the way up. It's going to go over to the collarbone. It's going to connect to the collarbone. And it'll do this on both sides. So this collarbone is lifted up. So the chest muscle is going to connect to the arm right here. Same on this side. It's up near the top of the ball. Starts there, comes down roughly about there. And the way this connects is actually quite interesting. We can come over like this. And then as it gets close to the rib cage, it will start to curve and come down to this point here. And then over here comes down like this and then will curve up like this over to here. Now let me explain how we're getting this, these curves right in there. The chest muscles are actually made up of smaller groups of muscles. So if we have the arm and a collarbone like this, and we're gonna be spanning between here and here, the connection point down here has a band of muscles that comes up like this to the clavicle. Then we move up to the next connection point, which is right here. And underneath this band, we have another band of muscles that comes over like this. And then we move up, and then there's another band of muscles like this. And then we move up. And so you see you get this cascading fan effect. So that's how you get this curve right here, because it's one line going this way, and then the next one comes in like this, comes over, comes over and down, over and down, over and down. So that's how we get this curve effect. Now really the only connection point I'm real concerned with is this lower one, because that one's going to be visible. So the lower portion of the chest muscle is going to connect to the highest point on the arm. So keeping that in mind, I'm gonna bring this over like this. And then for now, I'm gonna leave this open because we're going to be covering all that with the shoulder muscles. 
Now, if you want to get a little more technical with the chest muscle, it actually comes down and over like this. So that original construction line that I had drawn in the beginning, that's more of a way for me to simplify complex objects. But that refers to this point right here. So you can actually come down like this and then come over following the form and then come up off the rib cage like this. Still respecting those connection points up on the arm. If I'm going to show the different groups, I usually just keep it to like four, maybe sometimes five groups. Just like that. So the bicep is named because there are two heads on it. And by head, let's just understand what a basic muscle group is. This is your basic muscle right here. On the ends are these tendons right here and here. Those don't stretch. Those are rigid. And then on the inside here is the muscle mass, the muscle body. So a muscle can only pull. It can't do anything else. It can either pull or it can relax. So when the muscle contracts, all the fibers are interweaved and they come together. And so all that mass has to be displaced because the distance has gotten so much shorter by these contracting. And so the belly's going to bulge out. So this is your basic contracted muscle. And there are a few muscles on the body where this is very prominent. And so we need to show this in our drawings. The bicep is one. The tricep is another. Also on the leg muscles, the calf muscles, those become pretty prominent when they get flexed. And even to some of the quad muscles, mainly the muscle on the side. I'm probably not going to be using all the official names of the muscles for right now. All we're really concerned about is locating these muscles and being able to draw them. So the bicep muscle connects right in between these two bones here on the forearm, right in the center, just a little bit below the upper arm, right in here. And then it has two connection points because it has two heads. So it's going to come up to the side of the arm and connect right up here on the side of the arm on one side. And then the other head is going to come up and connect to this little bony protrusion that is on the scapula here. And the way I'm going to draw this, I'm just going to draw this as almost like a bullet shape coming into a V right in between the forearm bones and then come straight up to the side of the arm like this. Now notice the arm is extended. The arm is extended, which means that this bicep muscle, it's sitting on top, it's going to be relaxed. It's going to be stretched out. So I'm drawing it long and thin, a little bit of a curve in there. I'll do the same on this side, long and thin, go right up to that bony protrusion. And then normally this would come down like this and you'd have a split in between the two and you'd have the other head here. Those are the two heads. And normally we don't see this split. So you can usually just draw this as one mass like this. And this is going to go underneath the chest muscle. So once you have this in place, you can erase everything above the chest muscle. 
So we don't need that anymore. We won't see it. Here's the little bony protrusion on the scapula. That's going to go straight to here. Now notice the arm here is bent. So now we're gonna draw this muscle, the bicep muscle, as being flexed. So I'm gonna come straight here, and then I'm just gonna come up a little bit, and give it a little rounded plateau up top. And then I'll be a little lighter through here because I still have to overlap this with some other muscles and that will probably alter where I put this angle. So for now, I'll just keep that a little light. But there is the flexed bicep muscle. And then let's come under here and I'm just gonna swoop down like this. So now that I have that in place, I'm gonna go ahead and continue bringing the rest of this chest muscle up. So this one connects over here and then connects high on the arm. This connection point over here, we're gonna have those uh, fibers fanning out. So we're going to get a little bit of a curve going this way. All right, just shaping that a little bit. All right, let's get the other arm muscle in, the tricep. Now the tricep, let's look at this one. It's going to connect right here. There's a little concave curve right here on the shoulder blade. And right in here, right in the middle of that curve, that's where the tricep's going to connect. That's where one head of the tricep is gonna connect. And then it's gonna go all the way down to the elbow bone, right there. The other head is going to connect right up here on the back of the arm bone. And it is also going to go to the elbow. And then the third head, because this is a tricep, so it has three heads, it also is going to connect to the elbow. It's kind of a tear-shaped muscle and it's going to sit back here like this. And then it's going to be sandwiched in between the bone and the other two heads of the tricep. So we really will only see the sides of it every once in a while. So this first head comes around like this connects right there. Also notice this is the arm that's bent. So the tricep is going to be stretched out. It's gonna be in its relaxed state. Nice long curve all the way to the elbow like this. So here I've just drawn it as one mass. But here's one head. And notice I brought the end to the side because this is a band of material right here, stiff material that, that the heads connect to. And they connect to it over on the sides. So there's the tricep right there in its stretched, relaxed state. And then, again, you might see some of the third head poking out like that. I don't think you'd see it on the other side. So from this angle, we're going to see this, this head right here coming all the way over to the elbow like this. And then we won't see the other heads, not from this angle. And then this is just going to bend around this joint and connect right here to the elbow. And then this goes underneath the chest muscle as well. 
So we can delete that connection to the shoulder blade. And then over here, we can do the same thing because I can see the other shoulder blade here. It's gonna come out from there. Now notice this time the arm is extended. So that means the tricep's going to be contracted. Now we can't see the elbow, but I'm gonna guess if I'm imagine looking through this bone, it's gonna be roughly about right there on the other side. So I'm gonna use that as my connection point. I'll come up and then I'm going to just add a little bit of a bulge in there. Just like that. Nothing too extreme. And then let me erase where that crows through the bone. And then right behind this bone here, from this angle, we would be able to see that third head poking out. So I am just going to draw it in right there. And remember, it's sandwiched in between the bone and the other heads of the tricep muscle. So from this angle, it's going to be on top of the tricep muscle. Okay, now let's get these shoulder muscles on. Now the shoulder muscles are interesting. They're kind of a shield looking shape. You know, in its, in its most simplest form, it kind of looks like this for looking at it from the front. And then you can subdivide it into three groups. So you've got this front group that's facing us, the side group. If we look at this from the top, It kind of looks like that. So this is the back, this is the front, and this is the side. In its most basic form, here's an arm, the front, the side, and the back. This is its most basic shape. On the arm bone, about halfway down the bone, you can almost sometimes see a direction change, meaning the bone comes out and then it just kind of changes direction slightly. You can usually see that. If you can't see it, then just come down the bone about halfway, but right about right in here, that's where the bottom of the shoulder muscles connect. And then they connect up top to the collarbone right here, right at the corner of the collarbone. The shoulder blade has a thin bone that looks like the collarbone. And then the collarbone comes around like this. This is a top view. So here's the collarbone, and this is the shoulder blade here. The shoulder, the front part of the shoulder is gonna connect here, and then the rear group of muscles are gonna connect here on the back. So back here, I kind of go like this. And they almost have a little bit of an S-curve sometimes because what happens is this muscle has to come over to this connection point, but it's going over the top of the tricep. So what happens is it's got to go up and over and then swoop back here like this. So you get a little bit of an S-curve sometimes. And then it comes up. You got kind of a medium line here. Then you've got a long line going up to the ball of the bone. And then it changes direction. You get a short line going to the collarbone right here like this. So that's kind of the shape right there. You got medium, long, and then short. And then sometimes you'll see the separation between the groups. Not always, but sometimes. So over here, you can kind of see the point where we need to connect them is right here. So that's gonna come up, medium, then a long line going all the way up to the ball, and then a short line coming over and connecting to the collarbones. 
So that connection point from this angle is going behind this bicep muscle. So that's why I erased it going to the bone. And then it's gonna come up and over and around. So we're gonna get kind of that S shape again. It's coming around that bicep now. And then it's coming up to this first quarter of the collarbone right here. So it's going to cover the chest muscle and the bicep muscle. You might see the separation between the front group and the side group. And you should notice it doesn't go all the way down to the connection point. This group is a little shorter. This is the shortest of all the three groups of the deltoid or the shoulder muscle. The back group is the longest group. All right, then over here, on this arm, we can kind of see that it's gonna connect right here. And it's going to come up, head towards the ball. Now this arm is lifted, so we could contract this shoulder muscle a bit because it's pulling the arm up. So coming from here. Actually, this clavicle is kind of going back and away from us, so we have to kind of imagine where is that first quarter of that collarbone. I'm just going to say right here roughly, because that's where, that's where this front group on the shoulder muscle connects. So I'm going to come up, over, make this more rounded, I think, just to kind of show that it's flexed and then it's going to come down and around like this. And it's gonna head right back over the top of this bicep. So we'll do a little cleanup in here. Not liking that. What's happening is this bicep's looking too long and it's because I've made the shoulder too short. It needs to come over like this and then come up like that and then this is coming down to that connection point there and that just comes from study after a while you start to see what looks right and what doesn't look right The trapezius muscle is this big muscle on the back. It's kind of a V-shaped muscle. It starts down here near where the rib cage meets the lower spine, and it comes up like a V on either side, heading right to the shoulder blades. So it rides along these collarbones like this and then it goes up. To the neck like this. And then turns into the back of the neck. This comes over pretty direct, and then there's a slight direction change as it goes up into the back of the neck. And it comes right from the edge here, right from these collarbones. So from this angle here, again, we're, we're not really seeing the back. We can see it a little bit, so we gotta kind of look through the drawing, but I'm gonna say one connection point is here. That's gonna come over to the neck like this. And then on this one, back here, I think. And I'm gonna come over like that. And then this is going to go up into the back of the neck. It's gonna go right into the base of the skull right back here. Kinda splits into two parts. So right back in here.
and then back of the head this is at an angle so I'm gonna say this is going to come like this from this one same thing we got this straight angle here and then it's going to change quickly and go up into the back of the neck this looks thin but this is the back of the neck we've got muscles in the front for the neck that I haven't drawn in yet let's do that now So from the collarbone, these points right here and here, where the collarbones meet the sternum, you're gonna have your, your front neck muscles, the sternocleidomastoids, and they're gonna go right behind the ear. Now the ear is gonna sit right in here like this. So right behind the ear on the skull, You're gonna have these big neck muscles. There's one side, it's really thin and tapered at the bottom and gets fatter as it goes up behind the ear. So there it is right there. We have to kind of guess where the ear is on the other side. So if I look at this distance between here and here, I can go back kind of that same distance roughly. It's not gonna be exact, but it's gonna be better than just guessing. And then come down a bit. I'm gonna say right there we could put in this neck muscle here. And then go up again like this here. And we can erase that. And that gives us a pretty decent looking neck. Now if you want to, sometimes you can see where this trapezius muscle connects to the front of the clavicle. It's right around the same point where this front group of the shoulder muscle connects. So if you go on the other side of the collarbone right here, you can take a little line that's heading right up to this crook up here, like that. Can't really see it on this side. Another thing you'll sometimes see is coming off the underside of these neck muscles, they actually branch off. And you'll see another smaller part fanning out from the bottom going to the collarbone like this. Um, you don't always see them, you don't always need them, but just know that they're there. I know there's a lot happening up here little complicated, but that's the human body for you. The last thing we need to get connected up here is the latissimus dorsi and the teres major. Now before we draw it here, let's see what it looks like back here. The latissimus dorsi starts down on the pelvis. See this peak on the pelvis right here, just in front of that, here and here? would be your connection points for the latissimus dorsi. And this is gonna come all the way up around the rib cage and it's gonna connect right below the ball of the arm. And it's going to connect on the inside. So it's going to kind of come under and then around to the front side. And we don't see that connection point, but if we do a curve here, and then we bring this down like this. Very subtle S shape that comes back on itself like this. Almost like two S shapes connected. We get this convex curve right through here because this is wrapping around the rib cage. And then it comes back in and then inserts right under the arm like that. Now from this angle, it's actually going underneath the tricep. So we can erase the connection point here. Same on the other side, it's gonna connect right under here like this. And then it comes back 
and blankets across the entire back. Now it's a very thin muscle. It's, it's thin, it's like a blanket, a very thin blanket. So you don't always see this part of it unless you're really looking for it. So you don't always have to include that in your drawings. So now that we know how it connects on this side, we can look for that ball of the arm bone, come down a little bit below it, and then I'm going to try and connect it up down here to the pelvis. Come over like this, just like that. And that'll give us this side here. And remember, now we're coming in front of the tricep so we can erase the connection point of the tricep and then let's go here and where's that ball right over here and that's all we need for the latissimus dorsi Now one other muscle that could influence the structure in this area is the teres major. The teres major connects to the back of the shoulder blade right here at the bottom. And it connects in almost the same place as the latissimus dorsi. And it's just kind of a bullet shaped muscle like that. See the same on the other side. So the reason I mention that is because you might see it coming through like that from this angle. It's pretty subtle though, so. Right, the rib cage. Pretty easy to define the edges of the rib cage. And the opening right here, you might see some ridge lines right there. To get us a center line, we've got the center of the pubis bone right here. And then we've got the center of the sternum right here. So then it's just a matter of connecting those two with a line, with a center line that follows the curve of the spine. So let's try and do that now. That'll give us a front center line. And then the top of this pubis bone, we can just do a curve, just follow that around. That'll give us the bottom of the abdominal area. And then we can connect the outermost edge of this pelvis with a straight line like this. Right to the rib cage, do the same on the other side. And that will form the waist and the obliques here on the side. Now these are gonna come down, these are the points, the hip bones right here, the points of the pelvis. This is an important landmark right here and here. So the obliques can come down to this point and then they can come out a little bit, out and up, and then go straight back up towards the rib cage, like this and like this. And then the navel I like to look about halfway between the rib cage and the pelvis, about right there. And then for a female character, I'm gonna come down just a little bit. And I'm gonna put the navel right there. And once I have that in place,
I can put in the belly layer. Notice how I'm just doing kind of a egg type shape. And I'm not coming all the way over to the obliques. I'm leaving a little bit of space in between them. And this doesn't need to be prominent, but I just like to have it here. And then this can start to come up towards the obliques this way. And then if I want to put in some abdominal muscles, coming down here at the lower part of the rib cage, I can come down at an angle like this on either side. I feel like the center line needs to come over this way a bit. And then this is just almost like an elongated W. And up here. Now the pubis bone, we need to come down a little bit. I'll do a straight line going across. And this is for the crotch, because the crotch is gonna come down below the pubis bone. And then angle back up like this. All right, now we're getting into the hip area. This outermost point right here, we can come kind of around and down right to this point of the upper leg, the ball on the upper leg, the femur. Just like that. And then same on this side. This side's kind of turned away from us, so this will be more straighter. And that's the gluteus medius muscles coming off the side of the pelvis. So going back to this point of the pelvis at the hip bone area, we're going to have a couple connection points there. One is this big belt strap muscle. It's a wide strap that's going to come down. So it's going to connect right here underneath the kneecap on this lower leg bone. So that's the tibia. That's so gonna come out and then straight at that hip bone like this. I'll probably have to adjust this. Let me get the other muscles in. Those will help dictate how to put this in. I'm kind of guessing right now and what helps is to get these quad muscles in. So all the quad muscles are going to connect to the knee. And the, the most prominent one on the inside is called the vastus medialis. And it's just a teardrop looking muscle. It connects to the knee, it comes around, and it goes and connects right here on the inside of that leg bone. So we can kind of rough that in. And then from there, it comes up over the top of the bone, kind of wraps around it, and then comes back around, kind of like this. Once you have that in, then it's easier to get this sartorius muscle and this strap muscle, because it follows right along the bottom of that muscle. And then shoots right up to the hip, like that. Now on the other side, is the vastus lateralis. We can't really see it over here. On this side, it connects to the knee, the outside of the knee, which we can't see the knee here, but it's roughly about here. And it's like a long fish-shaped muscle. And it goes to the top of the leg bone, like this. It's much more prominent when we're looking at a side view, so when we get to the side view, that'll become more obvious. But one thing we have to remember, just like with the arms, these legs are really extended. They're almost hyperextended, so these quad muscles are going to be more flexed, and the, the one that's most prominent is this one on the side. So normally, you know, I said it was kind of this fish-shaped muscle like this. Well, when it's flexed, because it's connected to the knee, you're gonna get this straight area. 
right here at the knee. So we're gonna come up from the knee straight up and then let's bring that muscle out kind of like this here. And then bring it to the top of that femur, that leg bone, like this. So we'll definitely be able to see that. I think it's the rectus femoris. It's right down the center of the leg. It is actually hidden by these two until it starts to poke out right here. It starts to emerge from between these two muscles. And then it's going to connect below the hip. So it's going to connect in this concave region right here on the pelvis, which is right here. So if we can imagine a straight line going from the knee to there, that'll better help us plot the position of this muscle. And it's going to go underneath the sartorius, which is going to be above it at that hip point. So it's going in there like that. So I'm going to draw this same muscle first this time over on this side because it might be a little easier to plot. So that little concave area, straight line to the knee, and then it's going to come off the knee, long tendon before it gets into the actual muscle. So like that. That's what it looks like. And then the sartorius, that strap muscle, it's going to be wide down here where it connects to the tibia right underneath the kneecap. And then I imagine it getting thinner as it comes underneath this vastus medialis muscle, this quad muscle right here. And then it reemerges as it comes out the other side and goes right towards the hip. And then it'll cross over... that rectus femoris right down the center, like this. Okay, there's another muscle that connects right at the hip bone, and it's called the tensor fascia lati. And so, from a side view, here's the pelvis bone. This is facing to the front and we're looking at it from the side, there's a muscle that connects all along this ridge right here. And, and so it's a little bit of a wider muscle and it comes down like this. So we wouldn't see the pelvis anymore once that muscle is in place. And this muscle connects to what's called the iliotibial tract which is not a muscle at all. It's a long band that goes all the way down the side of the leg and then it connects under the kneecap on the other side on this tibia on the lower leg. So we wouldn't see it here, but we will see it coming off of this pelvis right here. It's just going to come right into... This one connects conveniently to the vastus lateralis on this side. And then let's go ahead and just bring this up. That'll make that look a little cleaner. Just making these front quad muscles a little bigger. So this sits more in front of this muscle back here. And then we'd really probably only see the V, and then the straight line to the hip right there. All right, so then the inner leg muscles, starting down here, at the leg bone, there's a big muscle that's going to come up and then it's going to connect right here to the pubis bone. Just like that. Same on the other side. Just like that. And then also coming from the pubis bone, 
There's a few more muscles in here, but I'm just going to draw a line coming from there to there just to hint at them so we just don't have this big empty space right in there. Back here, let's look at the gluteus maximus. It starts and connects right here, a little bit below the ball on the lower leg. It's going to come over, and then we've got the tailbone right here. So we've got this angle here, then this is going to come down, and then this is going to go up like this. Same on this side. So we can look at how far down the gluteus comes below the pubis bone. So from the pubis bone, from this angle, you know, we might see a little bit of the crotch right here in between the two gluteus muscles from this angle. And vice versa, back here, we would probably see a little bit of these glutes. So from the front, come down below the ball on this leg bone, come over like this, and then we could imagine that the tailbone is over here like this. So I'm going to angle up towards it like that. Same on this side, come over, angle up towards it. So we might see two little angled lines right there. And then one other thing we might see in here, the hamstring muscles on the back of the leg. See these hoops on the pelvis? Right here at the back of the hoops, right about this area here, those are where the hamstrings connect. So the first one is going to connect to this bone right here. This is the fibula, the top of the fibula. And it's going to connect right here. And the muscle kind of looks like this. On the other side, on the tibia, which would be right under this sartorius muscle right here, you're going to get the other connection point. So you'll see the other hamstring coming around this bone right here, and then coming up on the other side of this point right here. And they create this little archway. Same here. It's going to come around a little bit of an S curve, very subtle. And then right here, the other one, like that. So we might see this one, this hamstring here is coming up and around. And then it's got to come up to this point up here on the pelvis. So we might see a little bit of that curve, that S curve right through there. And then that muscle right there, we can bulge that out a bit through there because it is fattier on the inside of the thighs right there. So a lot going on down here in the legs to create all these interesting curves. Same on this side, coming around those bones and then going up to that hoop on the pelvis. That's how we get that nice shape right through there. And then There we go. All right, the calf muscles. The calf muscle starts up on the upper leg and it goes right through this little archway that's created by the hamstrings. And these two little balls right here on the end of this femur bone, that's where the calf muscle connects connects right on top, then it comes and rolls right off of those and comes down into this form right here. Now, 
she's on her toes, so her calf muscles are going to be really flexed. So normally when you look at a calf from the side, here's the front of the leg. It's usually just kind of like this. It's very, very smooth and graceful. But the minute you stand on your toes, well, that's where this muscle gets engaged. So it's going to contract. So I'm going to be a little more prominent with flexing this muscle. Come off here. Come off down and then come back abruptly and then notice this little s curve i'm doing from the ankle that's that tendon that connects the calf muscle to the foot you can split that down the center if you want as well because it is composed of two groups sometimes you'll see that split but don't feel like you have to draw that I'm just drawing it so you can get an idea of how this is shaped. Just like that. So from here, we look at the femur bone, the lower part of it. We're going to come off of that. I'll do a little line here to show the kneecap, patella, and then underneath that, there's not a whole lot of muscles on the lower leg, and the ones that are there don't really show through much. You do see this bone. I am just going to follow it down, and sometimes you'll see just a hint of it, this little curve right through here. You'll see that sometimes. So we can put that in like that. Give a little bit of separation between the muscles that sit in there and the calf muscle. And then I'm just going to add the foot, add a little bit of padding on the bottom to the toes. bones right there the inside ones all right let's go ahead and get this head drawn in I've already got the ear in place brow line I'm gonna bring the eyes down right along there center lines pushed over pretty far so I'll have an eye there won't see much of the other eye nose is going to come out like this, hairline, uh, halfway is the lower lip, and then above that, the mouth, Alright, so the last thing is the forearm. Now the forearm can get really complicated, so it's best just to break it up more simply, there is a muscle that starts on the upper arm, on, right on the outside, right about here. The brachioradialis, and it's going to come up and down, and it's going over to the bone that is right above the thumb. So the radius right there, the bone that actually rotates around the other bone, that's the radius. But that's the brachioradialis. Now here we can see the thumb is over here, which means that it's going to connect on that bone that's on the opposite side here. So it actually crosses over the forearm like this. So on this side, we would see it coming out here, coming down, and then here's the thumb here. So it's gonna come right here to the radius. I'll go ahead and circle that. That's kind of a prominent point. You'll see that poking out a lot. So it's good to know where it is because you'll have to draw that. And then let's just come over like this. So it goes over and then down like that. 
And then it's going back behind the bicep. So I'm gonna erase the connection there. Now we look over here on the upper bone at this protrusion on this side. And from there, there's a connection point of a big group of muscles that are gonna go down uh, underneath right here. So I'll go underneath from the palm, come down, and then up. Just like that. Now on the other side, there's another group that does that exact same thing, but it goes to the top. So it starts on that side of that upper arm bone. It's going to come up and over, but it's sitting underneath this brachioradialis muscle. So we won't see it until they start to poke out over here and go into the top of the hand. So then we can erase that like that. And then we're not going to see a V point right there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that back a little bit. So looking at this now, um, this arm looks a little too wide. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit. That looks better. So this side, we can look at the upper arm bone on this side here. So that's on the inside. So that's this one here. So that's going to go to the palm of the hand. So this is just going to almost look like a a chicken leg. And that's going to cover the bicep there. And then over on the other side, the same thing. Just kind of get that chicken bone looking shape. And then come straight over to the wrist and come down just like that. And so here you'll see the point of the ulna. Sometimes that'll be prominent. Just a little bony protrusion. We'll have these fingers cross the shoulder right there. This looks a little too bulky. Let's uh, get this a little more subtle. Sometimes I have a tendency to exaggerate things a little bit to make them more clear. Then I gotta go back and make them a little more subtle.